So now we're going to do more than just console.log so we can see what's going on in JavaScript, but we're actually going to do modifying the document object model in JavaScript. So recall on the o1noscript.htm that I just used the debugger to modify the document object model, right? We modify the document object model, and if it's visible through the window, then the what we changed is instantly changed. So literally, we're running JavaScript on one end, and the UI just changes. It's like it instantaneously. Although, if you make mistakes and you run code that runs too long, the changes will be delayed because we have to finish the JavaScript code and let the browser do the redisplay. But we can change these by hand, but let's just do this instead with a trigger and to trigger it, we have to be able to grab bits of the DOM or query the document object model. Let's recall o3event.htm. And all we're showing here is that we can define a function in JavaScript. Then we can have an onClick method that calls my function after the click happens. Again, remember that those quotes are important. OnClick attribute is a string, which is only parsed at the moment that you click it. And then func is called in that moment. So let's do something a little more interesting in that onClick method. So the top part is still a, an ID tag, uh, an H1, except now we put ID equals fun. And uh, you can choose anything you want for the ID. It's got to be unique across the whole document. Remember CSS. And then it has a bunch of attributes and methods. Elements have attributes and methods. And one of them is inner HTML. And I simply assign the inner HTML to a cool header. And that's how you basically see that change. We're changing the element. Now, an important part of this is the function ends, so it goes back into the browser, and the browser sees the change to the document object model and then displays it. If we did something crazy in the last line of my func that did not give the thread back to the browser, it might get messed up. But we're not gonna, we're gonna just return, we're gonna make our change to the document object model. This code here. Console log let lm equals console log lm inner html. That's really quick. Just in a blink of an eye, that code runs, meaning there's nothing slow in it. Everything happens fast. There's nothing to wait for. So everything happens fast. We get the browser back to uh, redisplay things. And so you can see when you click on it, you can see that it says, I was clicked. It goes and looks the element up and it says, Oh, I just found an h1 tag. And then I set its inner HTML to be a cool header. I could have read, I could have appended something because I could have read it inner HTML if I felt like it. But then as soon as that function leaves, then it finishes, then the browser takes over and then redisplays the updated DOM. And again, everything that we did happens so rapidly that you don't even notice it. So now let's add some stuff to the DOM. We can completely build a tag and we can add it to the DOM. Everything we've done so far is find a tag, mess with it, and then put it back. So let's add something to the DOM. This is a little bit of a more intricate, but we are going, and this is zero, this is a source code 09-append.htm if you want to go play with it. So we're going to have a little button, an anchor tag, and we're going to have an add, call the add function. And then what you'll notice is we have a UL tag and I've got an ID of zap on the UL tag. And then the first item is a LI, list item tag, and then slash UL. And then in the JavaScript, I create a global variable called counter equals one. And then I create a function called add. And in that function, I go create a new create element. Document.createElement says make me a new element. I want an element of a tag, an li tag. And then I can set things. I can set its class name. I can set its inner HTML. I'm concatenating the word the counter is, and then I'm concatenating the number. And um, <coughs> then I'm going to go document get element ID zap. Now that is the UL tag, append child. So the li tag is a child of the UL tag. And by saying append child, I say, I want to make a new child of this UL tag. And so that's, that's when you click it and then counter goes up by one and it's a global variable. So kind of every time we call add that counter goes up. So first item, you click it, it says the counter is one. You click it again, it adds counters two. Click it again, add counters three. You can do this as many times as you like. But the idea of making a new tag that's not connected to the document, we make an LI tag, we set some stuff in it, and then we plug it into the document with a pen child. If you look at the, it starts out with first item, 
And you'll notice, of course, that the, the More button has an event associated with it. We created that event with the on-click. And then after we click it a couple times, boom, 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 it just adds those things. So we can manipulate many things in the document object model from JavaScript, including changing the CSS, which means we can alter the look of things. And so in this, we've got a uh, header tag with an ID of fun. Again, the ID is a way for us to grab it in JavaScript. Okay. And then we're going to have a button with an ID of poof and a button uh, ID of show that has the text hide and show. And we're going to do this using add event listener. There are shorter, we could have used the on click, but I just want to kind of get used to the notion that uh, one of the things you do toward the end of your document uh, is you add all the event listeners. So you have all the HTML that gets displayed, and then after that, you add event listeners. Um, and so in that script, we do document get element ID show, and then we're going to add an event listener, and we're looking for the click event. And it says open paren quote click quote comma and then what I have is literally code and again first class functions the function keyword returns code so that we are doing the second parameter to add event listener so we're creating a function but you'll notice the function ha currently has no parameters and it has no name open curly brace it's an anonymous function and it only has one line of code document get element ID fun dot style, that's how we get our hands on the CSS. Display is a CSS value, and we're going to set it to the string block. So that is our show. And we'll see that when we do the poof, the add event listener, you know, on the, the hide button, we're going to have an event listener for clicking. And in this one, we're going to set the display none, which means it's going to hide. So you click on hide. But you'll see a slightly different syntax, and you'll see the syntax a lot because that early JavaScript there was only one syntax for this and now there's sort of more clever syntaxes in later versions of JavaScript. And a key thing to remember is that this second example for the poof, open paren element equals greater than, which is kind of like a right arrow, equals document get element ID fun. This is a shortcut to define a function, to define a function with no name. And so for all intents and purposes, these two uh, bits of code are equivalent. Um, we're saying when there is a click on the poof item, we're going to call this function that has no name, but it takes as one parameter the event. The event is a parameter to all these little events that the browser sets up when it calls us. And then we're not going to use it, actually. We just say document get element ID fun style dot display equals none, which makes it vanish. Okay, so if you run this, 13-css.htm, you click on hide, the header goes away. You click on show, it comes back. You click on hide, it goes away. And so this is just an example of how you can modify CSS.